So we've talked a little bit about granting access and how it works, how MySQL references the grant tables. We mentioned how to and showed you how to remove access to the anonymous accounts and discuss again the three key tables, user, DB, and host, when deciding whether or not to permit users from certain hosts to gain access to your DBMS. But we've not yet shown you how to create new users on the system for access by users across the network as well as on the local system besides the root user. In other words, how to create new users or perform user management within MySQL. The easiest way to foray into creating additional users on the system is to simply create a user that's permitted to log in from any system using a wildcard. And as you know, the wildcard is the percent symbol. We should take a note of that. Note percent and we specified 5, but it's really percent, is equal to wildcard in SQL notation. And you can use it when using clauses such as where, like, and the like. Great, so we want to create a user that is permitted access, and we want to give this user full privileges to the system, which may or may not be a wise thing to do, depending on how secure your environment is. You'll make that determination. But it's an easy foray and an easy way to understand how user management works or how authentication works within MySQL. So we want to create a user that's permitted to log in from any host. Now there are a few ways you can create users, but perhaps one of the easier ways is to either use the create user command, which, is, which was introduced in the recent 5.x series, or to use one of the long-standing commands that you'll find works within the 4.x series in the event that you come across any of those instances and you certainly will likely come into or come across 4.x series MySQLs because they're out there they're still being shipped with current distributions of Linux so we'll show you the tried and true true way and that is to use the grant command the grant command performs two steps at once it actually creates the user in the necessary table, the user table, and in order to do so, the user who you're logged in as to the MySQL instance needs to have insert rights into, and we'll show tables, into the user table. So in order to create a new user, the user who you're currently logged in as, which you can reveal by executing select user or select current user, must have insert rights into the user table. Now you may be wondering how can you tell although you are logged in as root which presumably has full access to the local system how can you tell whether or not you have full access to the system? Well there is a show command that you can execute called show grants which will actually show you the privileges that are granted to the locally logged in user. Root at localhost and that's who we're logged in as identified by this particular hash is granted all privileges. How do we know that we're granted all privileges? Well, one of the easiest ways to learn how to create users is to run the show grants command because it shows you the exact command that you need to run or pretty much the exact or close to the exact command that you need to run to create a new user. We know that we have full access to all databases and all ta tables within the system because of the asterisk notation that you see here, the star dot star or asterisk dot asterisk, which simply means all databases and all tables. So the user who we're currently logged in as root at localhost has been granted all privileges which means reload, flush, create, delete, alter, every imaginable SQL permission, not necessarily a MySQL permission but a SQL permission has been granted to the locally logged in user for every database for every table throughout the system and that user root at localhost is identified by a given password which is represented by the following hash that you see on the screen in addition you know that we're a super user because we've also been granted with the grant option which means we reserve the right to grant additional permissions to other users or new users to the system or to elevate the permissions of an existing user on the system. So we are the super user. And what we're going to show you is how to create initially another super user and then access the MySQL daemon instance from local and remote systems using that super user account. Then for practice we'll remove that super user and then create a database and then create a user with fewer privileges than the super user. So what do we want to do here? Create 
additional MySQL users. And we'll begin by creating, or we'll create a new super user who can use MySQL from any, and that's a keyword, system, including the local host. In order to do so, we'll execute the grant command, similar to what you see on the screen, the MySQL terminal monitor. So we want to grant all privileges on star dot star to the name that we're about to define. So let's just copy everything you see here up to and including the identified by password space single quote. We'll paste it into our text document and then work on this particular entry. So we want to grant all privileges on star dot star and let's create this new user as a user called Linux CBT for simplicity since we have this account defined pretty much on all systems throughout our network. Linux CBT and in this case to create a, a, a truly super user who is able to access the system from any system we're going to use the wildcard that we've mentioned and that's the percent symbol so instead of Linux CBT at localhost which would restrict us to only connecting from the local system we'll simply specify Linux CBT at percent and that's all you need to do to specify a user who can log in from any system on your network simply specify percent in either place either in the users users place or the hosts place and that'll cover all possible values for that particular field so grant all privileges on star dot star to Linux CBT at localhost identified by a given password which will be stored between the single quotes that we'll specify here so let's go with a password of XYZ123 followed by a single quote and Optionally, you can specify the with grant option, which will give this particular user the ability to grant privileges to additional users, which means that Linux CBT will be able to elevate privileges for existing users and also able to use the grant or create user command to create additional users as well as to drop users and so on. Let's go ahead and execute this command. We'll paste it and we'll debug it and as you can see here the identified by password is expecting the hash so what we'll do is specify without the password we inadvertently copied the password over which expects the hash immediately following it so this should simply be identified by and the password immediately following rather than calling the password function by calling the password function it expects a hash so let's try that again and now the query ran successfully and MySQL accepted the password in plain English and has converted it to a hash. So by specifying the password which we extracted from the show grants command, it expected, and that's MySQL, a hashed version either using MD5 or SHA of the password. Now if you have a utility that uses or can generate MD5 or SHA based passwords, then by all means create the hash and then specify it after the password keyword so that you don't specify the password in the clear text for any shoulder surfers. Otherwise specify the password quickly and clear the screen. Now let's confirm that this new user exists. First let's remove any evidence of creating a new user and we'll then execute select user comma host from and we could specify password but it's going to be reflected as a hash but just to prove it from the user table and notice that there's a new user called Linux CBT with the wildcard in the host field which means Linux CBT can come from any host so what we want to do is go ahead and attempt initially from the local host followed by the remote hosts on the network to connect to our local MySQL daemon so after we've created a user test local and remote connectivity that's very important and then we can proceed to reducing the privileges or removing the account altogether and defining a less privileged user for proper usage but it's always easy understanding how easy it is to create a dangerous account such as Linux CBT that can log in from any host and then scale it back so in a separate window 
we're going to connect using the MySQL client as the user Linux CBT. As you know, anonymous doesn't work. So if we execute MySQL and instruct it to prompt us for a password, we can't connect as a non-privileged user. However, if we were to specify MySQL password followed by user Linux CBT, which is not required because we are logged in as Linux CBT, so really the failure we just got here is because the user Linux CBT is recognized but the password is incorrect. So we don't even need to specify the user in this case because the user is proper. So if we specify password XYZ123 with no spaces, we have connected and a select current underscore user or user doesn't matter reveals that we're logged in as Linux CBT at percent, which means we are a distinct user at any host. Now again, just to clarify, MySQL relies upon two pieces of information from the user string that's submitted by the client. It relies upon the left side which identifies the username and the right side which identifies the host name. It's also done for uniqueness so that you can have duplicate usernames at different hosts. For example, you may have a user called Linux CBT at one host such as Linux CBT Media 1 but you may also have Linux CBT at a different host such as Linux CBT Serve 1 or Linux CBT Serve 2. These are actually systems on our network. So by defining a user as two pieces of information, the name followed by the host name, you're able to create duplicate users or seemingly duplicate users, but they're truly unique because the host name is never replicated. So keep that in mind. Let's execute a show grants, which we did recently. And when you execute show grants, as we told you, it tells you your current privileges within the MySQL database system that is the DBMS. We won't just say database because it really applies to the whole DBMS. We have all privileges to all databases and all tables logged in as the user Linux CBT from any host identified by a password, password which is reflected by the hash that you see here. And we have the ability to create new users. And we also have the ability to drop accounts and delete it and do other damage to the DBMS or to totally administer the system as user Linux CBT. Great. Now from a separate window, which we'll access using Control shift t we'll want to connect to a remote system and then connect back to our local system using the MySQL client. So as we've done, let's history grep SSH. And here we have SSH test user 1, but there's also SSH root to a remote system, 192.168.1.100, which happens to be Linux CBT Media 1. Let's just cat etc hosts to see whether or not the entry is in the hosts file. And it isn't, so we'll need to specify the IP address or simply update the hosts file or DNS. We'll SSH as root to 192.168.1.100. This is a remote system. Our system has an IP address of .50. It will prompt us for authentication. And once on that remote system, we'll execute MySQL. And if we do so with help, you'll see the help fly by. And if you want to see the version of the client that's installed on the remote system, simply execute the uppercase V or long name form dash dash version. So MySQL uppercase V reveals that the remote system, Linux CBT Media 1, has the same 5.018 which is considered to be the current standard stable release. So from this remote system we will execute MySQL followed by host. In this case the host is going to be Linux CBT DB1. But let's be sure that our, local, our remote system knows who Linux CBT DB1 is by attempting to send three ICMP packets. We'll ping dash C space 3 Linux CBT DB1. This should send three packets if it knows who the host is. It doesn't. If we were to modify, however, etc hosts, we should then be able to create an entry. And actually, there is an entry in this particular file, Linux CBT DB1. Linux CBT. Internal. So let's try it again. Uh, in fact, we missed the B1. So it does know who the host is. Excellent. So we just misspelled the host name. So let's then attempt to use the MySQL client followed by hosts, and we'll simply go with Linux CBT DB1. We could specify the fully qualified domain name. 
or the short name or the IP address doesn't matter because the MySQL client on the remote system will submit our local credential this is over on the remote system as the user Linux CBT at Linux CBT Media One but it won't matter because the MySQL user table permits access from any user who matches Linux CBT followed by any host as a wildcard so let's attempt to connect the user will use it won't be root so we'll need to specify you Linux CBT because otherwise the client will submit root you can tell that we're logged in as root because of the hash bash pound let's attempt to connect and it'll prompt us we didn't specify dash p it'll prompt us for a password and the password as we know is xyz123 and now we have a session to our local system from the remote system we've been granted connection ID 14 and a show grants will reveal that we have full access to the system so now we have access from a remote system as user like CBT and we've proven the point that in the user table let's use MySQL and then select user host from the MySQL from the user table that is so we want user and host from the user table and we're missing the from here so user host from user so this proves that any user who claims to be the name Linux CBT from any host will be permitted access to the local system. Now you may be wondering, could you also specify a percent or a wildcard in the user column? And you certainly can, which means any user who ultimately matches the password, because this is all row based. I mean, SQL is really just making a query to determine which row matches. So let's get that password column and discuss a little further. So if we specified wildcard wildcard for both user and host fields then any user who simply matches one out of the three pieces of information in this case just the password would be granted full access that's quite easy to implement let's since we do have grant app the grant option which is evidenced by executing show grants and let's terminate it with a semicolon let's create a new user called Linux CBT DB or Linux CBT2 that is so we'll grant all privileges in this case we won't even specify a username we'll just go at percent at percent on star dot star to percent followed by the at symbol which doesn't need to be enclosed within the single quotes followed by open quotes percent and this is a dangerous account to create but we just want to show you that it is possible identified by password and in between in this case we don't need password identified by XYZ123 and this should give us options to create the user let's execute it now we have a new user let's select user host password from user and you'll see we now have a new user called percent percent or a new user who can log in using any name from any host so long as they match the password XYZ123 which means if we quit the existing session by typing exit or quit doesn't matter and then we rerun the MySQL connect command but this time without specifying the username the MySQL client will submit root as a username we could even explicitly specify root or leave it to specify a root or give it some fictitious name let's try coffee as a made up name to prove that it matches the wildcard that you see in this column let's specify that password as XYZ123 and in this case the behavior is exactly how we expected it to be which is MySQL did not permit access into the system as a user who did not match the particular value. So in this case, we do need to get two out of three instead of one out of three, which is basically the point that we want to drive home, which is MySQL security has been increased to allow us to connect using two out of the three pieces of information. So we must match two out of the three. In this case, we haven't. We've specified an illegitimate user that does not match 
Now what if we were to try to connect as root with the XYZ password, XYZ123. So in this case, user root, password XYZ123. And notice, access is still denied because this is an incorrect password. How about ABC123, the original password used for root? Doesn't work because root is defined to connect either from localhost or from Linux CBT DB1. So we must match this particular user. Now what if we were to create a user called coffee and allow that user to log in from any host? Well, just like with the Linux CBT user, it would work as well. The grant option is all we'd need to run. Let's find in our history. And once we've located it, we'll execute it. Let's execute grant all privileges on star dot star to coffee at percent for any host identified by XYZ123 and we'll send this off then let's attempt to connect this coffee which is our recent option here and we'll be prompted for a password and while we're in we'll select current underscore user open close paren and we're in as coffee so you must match at least two out of the three which includes the password of course as well as the user or host one of them should match but generally the user needs to be identified only the anonymous account which is set up with blank would work or if you specify blank for user would you then be able to log in and substitute any user like with the original user specified so for example when we define the user percent in this user column we could have defined blank in our recent grant statement so here we granted for example privileges on coffee dot star or coffee dot asterisk that is or percent wildcard we could have said blank dot percent identified by XYZ123 and then if we execute a select user host password from mysql dot user you'll see that we now have the equivalent of an anonymous account followed by any host followed by XYZ123 well from the remote system let's quit the session and then let's re-execute MySQL username let's call this one T instead of coffee followed by a prompt for a password and a host of Linux CBT DB1 let's see what happens when we specify the proper password in this case notice it's let us in and let's select current user and you'll see that we're logged in as an anonymous user from any host. Now this is the most dangerous account. So if you create an account, well, we should run a show grants to show you that we do have pretty much full privileges. As you can see, show grants for all. We pretty much have all privileges on the system, with the exception of granting permissions, because we didn't explicitly grant that. So the correct way to grant full privileges to any user at any host is to essentially create a new anonymous account. Once an anonymous account is in place and the anonymous account is permitted access from any host, then you have a dangerous account. So a select user host password from mysql.user will reveal that there's a new anonymous account that we need to get rid of. So next we clean up these accounts and then we set up the accounts explicitly for the systems that should be permitted to access our DBMS.